Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today, we are going to spill some tea. What kind of tea are we gonna spill, Kelsey? Today, I'm going to do my very first anti-haul. I have never done an anti-haul before. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't even really know what an anti-haul was before one of my subscribers suggested to do it. And although an anti-haul does lean a little bit on the negative side, if you wanna go that way, I do think it is important to kind of recognize products that you think are either overpriced, not worth the hype, or just not worth your time and money. We all need to be smart, savvy shoppers. So I wanna be sure that both you and me are spending our money wisely. And I think there are certain products and certain concepts and certain price points that are just a no-go, not even worth trying. But before we do that, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment down below, come say hello to me. Also tell me some of your anti-haul products or tell me if you see any of these products that I'm talking about and you're like, nope, you're wrong, you need to try it. You girls not always right on everything. I do strongly, strongly believe that these products are not worth your money or there are better options out there for you. And we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna finish my coffee and then we're gonna spill some tea. <laughs> Obviously, I have to preface all of this by saying this is just my personal opinion. These are just the opinions that I have formed over the years and years of buying different makeup products. Obviously, I am not on any of these PR lists. If any of these companies see this and they're like, nah, the bitch is wrong. Prove me wrong. I would love to be proved wrong. Just gonna put that out there. The first is going to be very controversial, but I have good reasons for it. First are all of the Dyson hot tools. Listen, I think that the innovation of these Dyson products is so, so cool. I mean, it's a vacuum company that now is using the vacuum technology to make safer ways to style your hair. So cool. But that price point, $600 for a blow dryer, $600 for a flat iron and a curling iron. Granted, all of these products do multiple things, but you cannot tell me that it is worth $600. You cannot convince me that $600 of my hard earned money is going to be worth it for this one item that's going to style my hair. Now you may be looking at me like, girl, your hair needs help. You need that Dyson. Maybe I do, but I just do not think that my valuable $600, that's almost a full month's rent for me, it's a little bit less, but it's almost a full month's rent in New York City is worth it. You cannot tell me that. Now there are some hair styling tools that are incredibly expensive that are worth it, but not $600 worth. I just think that is wildly ridiculous. Just for the average person, that's a lot of money to spend on a hot tool. It is just ridiculous. I'm not spending my hard earned $600 one month's rent on a flat iron or a blow dryer. I'm not gonna do it. And I don't think you should either. My next anti-haul product is all of the Kylie skin products. Maybe one of them might be like an outlier and might be worth the money. But I gotta tell you that if you know anything about skincare, the ingredients is a really, really important part of it. Your skin needs nutrients, it needs quality products going in to really soak it up. The ingredients in her skincare really isn't that great, especially for the price point. Like I'm looking at something right now, it's the Kylie Skin Set. It has a foaming face wash, a walnut face scrub, a vanilla milk toner, vitamin C serum, face moisturizer, and an eye cream. Great, great compilation of a set. It's $125, which like for higher end products isn't super bad, especially if you're getting full sizes. But I think you could take that $125 
and you could get better products. I think it's really cool that Kylie has become her own businesswoman. She's become an entrepreneur. She's got her own brand. She's really making a living for herself. I really do appreciate the badass bitch that she is. That's not the problem. I think she sells out and she sells so well because of who she is and not because of her products. This is gonna be a hot, hot take. But I think that she has drugstore quality makeup at a high-end price point. And that's no shade to drugstore makeup. It's good, some of it's even great. But if I'm buying high-end makeup at a high-end price point, or even like mid-level price points, she's more mid-level than high-end, I would say, I want to make sure my money's going to be worth it. That isn't to say if you love Kylie, buy her shit. Like support your girls, support the people you love because like, what are we doing in this life if we're not supporting the people we love? But if you are just like, I don't really care about Kylie, I would not buy Kylie skin. I just don't think it's gonna be worth it. That's probably a hot, hot take. But I said what I said. Next is a little bit of a cheat. Purely because I have tried it before, I have spent my money on it before, and I will never ever do it again. Next is the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. You guys, I had high hopes for this. I heard the scent was just incredible. I heard that it tightened the skin on your legs and butt. That's why it's called Bum Bum Cream. I used a whole big jar of it, and I gotta tell you, I didn't see shit. Also like I'm 27, I don't have a lot to tighten up. I will admit that, that part's kind of on me. But the scent was really not that great. People raved about the scent. I've seen dupes all over the place be like, this smells just like the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. Like, uh, it smells so good. Girl, buy your dupes because this product is not worth it in my opinion. I say that because like you can like the smell of it, that's cool, but it's such a high price point for a lotion. The smell didn't last very long. I didn't really feel that moisturized afterwards and I went through it so fast. I am now a whole body moisturizing kind of person. I think we all should be. The epidermis is an important thing to take care of. Not with the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream though. Don't use that because it's just not worth it. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. Don't do it. Don't do it, not worth it. I will not be rebuying that. My next two are eyeshadow products and they are going to also be controversial. Honestly, I feel like all of these are gonna be controversial, but like that's kind of the point of an anti-haul. So I'm going with it. My next choice are Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes. I feel like this should be 100% understandable to anyone who's a normal human. Yes, the Natasha Denona eyeshadow products are supposed to be incredible. They're supposed to be great eyeshadows, but these palettes are over $100. I'm sorry, when did paying over $100 become a logical thing to do for eyeshadows? I have three reasons why you should never spend that kind of money on an eyeshadow palette. If you're watching a makeup video, it probably means you have a lot of makeup in your life. You have so many eyeshadow palettes. I have so many eyeshadow palettes. I don't use them that often. I have like one go-to eyeshadow palette and then all of the rest of them just kind of sit there until I need them for a special event. That's reason number one. You're not gonna use it all the time. Number two, is that you will, in this day and age of makeup and the quality of makeup, you will be able to find eyeshadows that are just as good or maybe a little less good, but at a significantly better price point. Third of all, no one is going to know you used a $125 eyeshadow palette on your eyes when you're walking down the street. At least when you buy like a Prada sweatsuit or a Gucci purse, you're walking around and people are like, damn, she's got Prada on, she's got Gucci on. People can see your opulence when you're walking down the street in an outfit. They cannot tell you are wearing $600 worth of makeup. They don't care, they're not gonna ask you. Nobody cares. <laughs> I just could never fathom spending that kind of money on an eyeshadow palette, even if it's the best eyeshadow in the game. 
Again, Natasha Denona, if you want to send me a pallet so I can prove that it is worth $125, like, I wouldn't be mad about it. But I'm definitely not spending my own money on that. Mm-mm. It's not going to happen. No, 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 no. The second eyeshadow palette is going to be a dividing factor amongst the audience. It is the Urban Decay Naked Palette. Now, that being said, Urban Decay Naked Palette, I think I had the Naked 2 palette, was the first high-end palette I ever bought. It was $50, and that was a lot for me in college. $50 was a lot for me, and I used the shit out of that palette. I used it until I couldn't use it anymore. But I used a Naked Palette recently, and I just don't think the quality of it is to the standard that we are at nowadays. Eyeshadows have come so far and the quality of eyeshadows at most price levels are just so good now that you can't be complacent when it comes to your old products. You really have to keep revamping them and keep them up to date with the times. And I do not feel like Urban Decay has done that. I feel like their brand in general, besides their setting spray, their all-nighter setting spray is my ride or die. Other than that, I just don't feel like they've kept up with the times. I feel like they were a really big brand to start off with. And I feel like they've kind of tapered off and just like completely gone. Like they are in the rear view. They are your bad ex-boyfriend that you never even think about anymore. Like it, it was fun while it lasted, but it ended really badly and you don't want to reminisce about it. <laughs> If any of you use Urban Decay in your regular makeup lives, please let me know because it is just so far removed from any makeup that I think about. Even when I'm watching makeup YouTube videos, I rarely see people use Urban Decay. Maybe there's like a community of Urban Decay stands out there. I am just not one of them. <laughs> and this next one is anything from YSL Beauty. You might be thinking, that's a weird one. Why would you choose that? But I'm gonna tell you why. If you've ever been to Sephora and you're just kind of wandering around and then you kind of wander into the really high-end makeup section with the Dior and the Marc Jacobs and then you wander past YSL and then you just keep on going because nothing looks interesting. The packaging is gorgeous. I'll give you that. YSL knows how to make something look beautiful. They've been doing it for years. They better know how to make something look beautiful. But the products themselves are just not innovative enough for me to think that that price point is worth it. They're very much in the same realm of the Marc Jacobs and the Dior and Charlotte Tilbury. But I think that those brands do some innovating and have a few really standout products that a lot of people really love. First of all, I don't see people talking about YSL Beauty very often. Second of all, I think you're just really paying for the brand name, which is fine. If you like YSL and you feel really luxe using it, like, cool, that's your prerogative. But I just don't think it's worth it. If you want to support YSL, get one of their handbags. Those things are sick. I would kill for a YSL handbag. But the makeup is just not, not it. I've swatched some of it in the stores and I've gotten little samples of it and it's just nothing special to me. When you buy Dior, like you feel luxe. These, those products feel like they have put a lot of money into them, even if they haven't. They really feel like it. But if you really want to spend your money for a high price point, go to Pat McGrath. Oh my God, her products look incredible. I've never used any of them, but I would kill to use some Pat McGrath. I think that is an instance where you are just paying for the packaging and the brand name. You are not actually paying for quality. I said what I said. I have one last one and it tears me up a little bit inside. It truly does. But I'm gonna say it because I think it needs to be said. This is another one where I have used it before, but I would never buy it again. It is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. I know, I know, I used to love this concealer. I remember the product itself being so beautiful, but it did crease on me a little bit. I will say that, like it did get a little creasy, but like back in the day, I didn't really care. My problem with it 
is the packaging. It's just this squeezy tube that has no way to actually apply it onto your face. You would have to like squeeze it onto the back of your hand and then apply it with a brush. But I feel like you would have so much wasted product. I just don't think it is a logical way to put concealer in something. I just don't think that packaging is it. And it deters me from buying it again because it is like around 30 bucks. So if I'm gonna spend $30 on a concealer, I want it to be easier to apply than in a tube that I somehow have to figure out how to get on my face. That product has been around for so long, you think they would have found a way to make it more accessible and easier to apply. I don't think they really care or that maybe it's never been brought to their attention, but I feel like it's almost unsanitary. It's not it, it cosmetics, it's not it. <laughs> but I will say the product, as I remember it, is really, really beautiful. So maybe if they repackage it, I will use it again. I have considered that maybe I should just like put it in my own little tube and then use it that way. But my memories of the product are not good enough for me to put that extra effort in. It's just not there for me. And I will not be repurchasing it. Okay, we really spilled some tea here. I really let my opinions fly. Again, if you like any of these products, this is just my opinion. It really, at the end of the day, doesn't matter what I think as long as you like it. <laughs> that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some sort of pleasure out of me bitching and moaning about how I don't want to spend money on things. <laughs> There's just so much good product out there for all different price ranges that I just don't want us to spend money on products that aren't worth it. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this kind of more like shady side of this channel, please let me know because being allowed to be shady is kind of fun. We can all have a shady moment every now and then. I'm not mad about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all super soon in another video. I love you all.